Hello, I'm standing in the pavilion. One of the things I'd like to do today is talk a little bit about a display we have in the pavilion that is often missed by some of the visitors that, it, that come to the museum because it's kind of tucked in one of the corners of the pavilion. But it has to do with air racing in the United States. And air racing in the United States has been part of aviation from the very beginning. The Thompson Trophy that was part of the Cleveland Air Races in the 1920s and 30s, very famous air race trophy, and the Bendix Trophy that came along later in the 1950s and 60s uh, for people who set aviation records. So racing has always been a part of aviation here in the United States. So in 1964, a guy by the name of Bill Stead decided he'd resurrect the races, which had kind of gone dormant for a number of years, and the pylon races that occurred in the Cleveland air races are what he wanted to resurrect. And so he had an airfield that was available outside of Reno called Sky Ranch, and he held the first air race that had that had been held that hadn't been held in a number of years at that airfield. And it was fairly well received by the pilots. Later on, he moved it two years later to State Air Force Base, and that's where it became the permanent home of the Reno air races, also known as the National Championship Air Races in Reno, Nevada. We have a wonderful display of several airplanes that actually flew in those races over the years. The first one I'd like to point out is Misbehaven. You'll notice it's a single wing, small midget airplane. It was in the Formula One class. It was one of the faster midget sing engine and single wing planes to fly, 247 miles an hour. It gives you a sense for the speed that those planes flew around the course. They flew around a 3.2 mile circuit. Very easy for the crowd to see. It was a very popular race. The second airplane you see is Sundancer. And it's really neat that we have that airplane here because it was very innovative. You'll notice it's a biplane. So it was actually part of the biplane class, a, a little different class from the Formula One, which was single wing. And you'll notice it was a very innovative two wing design. It only has one strut. It has a gull wing, small lower wing. It only flew in 1974 because it was so competitive that the Reno Air Race Association decided that it was too innovative for the event and they decided not to let it fly anymore after that. So we have it here in the museum as a one-time, very innovative example of the biplane class. And then the final plane you see is shoestring number 16. We're also very fortunate to have that airplane because it flew about 16 years from 1965 to 1981. And in those 16 years, it won 13 races. It actually holds the record for the most number of Formula One victories uh, of any airplane. It was flown most of the time by a guy named Ray Cote, and we're very lucky to have that airplane in our museum. The final thing I'll say about the Reno Air Race is that unfortunately, after about a 65 year career of being held in Reno, the races were basically canceled after last summer. So the last official Reno Air Race uh, Association sponsored air race was in September of 2023. They're hoping to bring it back at a different venue, but as it stands right now, 2023 was the last time the Reno Air Races were held. So you need to come by and take a look at our display. And you may also be able to take a look at some of the airplanes that we have in the museum. Uh, that were part of the Unlimited class and the AT6 class. And uh, those are two other classes that were also very famous at the Reno Air Races. Before we conclude the discussion of some of the items we have on display regarding the Reno Air Races, I thought it would be interesting to show one other beautiful painting that we have uh, above me of the P-51 that Bob Hoover flew almost every year during the Reno Air Races. Uh, to start the unlimited race, and he also flew aerobatic displays uh, in this P-51. Uh, so between his aerobatic displays and the fact that he was the safety pilot and the uh, starter of all the unlimited races, this P-51, codenamed or named by him, nicknamed by him, Old Yeller, uh, is, is really a beautiful painting, and it's a tribute to Bob Hoover, who, as you know, was one of the men who helped found the Reno Air Races back in 1964 and is known for his exploits in World War II as a fighter ace and later on as a test pilot. So again, if you come to the museum, this is tucked away in the uh, corner of the pavilion, so you have to check out the painting. Thank you.